Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk. And on the docket today, first, Chris Watts is a $6 million man. A judge exonerates three men from a killing in 1983. Bill Cosby speaks from prison. Takashi 69 may have 99 problems, but he has one less in Houston. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk. Thank you for tuning in. If you have not already done so and you like the channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like, and please leave us a comment. First, Chris Watts, the $6 million man. That's right, Chris Watts didn't win $6 million, didn't get a book deal for $6 million, but owes $6 million to the Rusick family, and he has agreed to it. In fact, let me show you this. As you may recall, the Rusick family sued Chris Watts for a wrongful death case uh, for their daughter, Shanann, as well as their two uh, grandchildren, Bella and Celeste. There's no way that Chris Watts, who could not even make his mortgage payment, is ever going to pay any money back whatsoever. It was kind of a principles type of thing. And most people will tell you, you don't litigate on principle. It just costs money. So the Rusics go forward and Chris Watts gets served. He doesn't respond to the complaint. So an answer is never filed on his behalf. A default judgment is set. The court then says we have to have a hearing to determine damages. Okay. And under the Colorado law, normally in a wrongful death case, um, you can seek economic damages, which is basically what someone's life would have been worth had they continued to work. Um, they're damages, all right? You know, you're, if you you couldn't work anymore, uh, in- income you could have made, assuming you were going to work for a certain number of years. Then you have non-economic damages, which are uh, pain and suffering. Um, that's what they're for, is non-economic damages. It's pain and suffering. It's hard to put a dollar value on that. Well, normally here in Colorado, non-economic damages for wrongful death cases are at $250,000, can kind of go up to five hundred dollars on a certain occasions. However, there is an exception in Colorado, and that is if there is a felonious murder. And not to get too far into the weeds, but under Colorado Revised Statute, Section 1321-203, it provides that in the case of a felonious killing, there shall be no limitation on the damages recoverable. A felonious killing is defined in CRS 15-11803, subparagraph 1, subparagraph B, includes first-degree murder. However, an actual criminal conviction for one of these listed offenses is not required for the court and a wrongful death conviction to determine that the at-fault party's conduct constituted a felonious killing. The court in a wrongful death action may independently determine, applying the preponderance of the evidence standard, whether the conduct of the party at fault constituted a felonious killing, thereby entitling the plaintiffs to recover an unlimited amount of non-economic damages. And that's really kind of what took place here. However, in the big picture, is it ever going to be, you know, why $6 million? Why not $12 million? Chris Watts is never going to pay a penny of this. So as of November 18th of 2019, the judge handling the civil case in Weld County, Colorado, signed a motion to accept the stipulation and order of the court. And in that stipulation, and I have here in my hot little hands, the stipulation signed by Chris Watts. And what does this stipulation say? The first uh, of the part of the stipulation states, the defendant stipulates that he wrongfully killed Shanann Watts, Bella Watts, and Celeste Watts, and that he wrongfully terminated Shanann's pregnancy with Nico. The defendant stipulates that he is liable for damages from his wrongful actions against Shanann, Celeste, and Bella for killing Shanann, Celeste, and Bella and for terminating Shanann's pregnancy with Nico. Chris Watts further goes on to stipulate, which is simply as a fancy word for agrees, 
The defendant stipulates that the death of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste was a tremendous loss to the plaintiff, Franklin Ruzik and Sandra Ruzik, and that they have suffered extreme emotional distress damages as a result of such loss. The defendant stipulates that plaintiffs Franklin Ruzik and Sandra Ruzik are entitled to compensation for the grief, pain and suffering, emotional stress, and loss of companionship they have incurred as a result of the murder of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. The defendant stipulates that plaintiffs Franklin Ruzik and Sandra Ruzik are entitled to a total of $3 million of actual damages as compensation for their grief, pain and suffering, emotional distress, and loss of companionship from the death of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste, which is $1 million and compensation for the death of each individual. The defendant stipulates that a total of $3 million as compensation for the grief, pain, and suffering, emotional distress, and loss of companionship endured by plaintiff Franklin Ruzik and Sandra Ruzik is reasonable and appropriate in this case. Chris Watts agrees to pay interest of 8% per annum, and by the time he had signed this, $521.50 had accrued in interest. This was dated November 5th, 2019, signed by Christopher Watts and notarized as well. Like I said, it could have been 12 million, 20 million. It doesn't matter. It will never be paid. Maybe if Chris Watts ever signs a book deal, which is very unlikely because people can see the story already based upon the information provided, um, Chris Watts would have to pay that to the Rusics to satisfy any judgment but there isn't any. Now, what can they do with this judgment? They can now go record that in the clerk and recorder's office. Now the sale of the house can go forward, and guess what? Any excess monies above and beyond what's owed to the bank can now go to the Rusics because they have a valid judgment. I would anticipate a uh, sale of that house coming in the next few months. And I would bet that any excess money will be paid to the Rusics to satisfy a portion of their judgment. Next on the docket, out of Philadelphia, three men have been exonerated for a 1983 murder. Alfred Chestnut, his co-defendants, Ransom, Watkins, and Andrew Stewart, were formally exonerated for the notorious 1983 murders of a junior high school student over a Georgetown basketball jacket. Police and prosecutors had claimed that the Georgetown jacket found in Chestnut's closet belonged to the victim. Now they acknowledged that the jacket had, in fact, come from his mother, hence was not involved in the shooting and the death of the student for the jacket. 36 years ago... DeWitt Duckett was a ninth grader at Harlem Park Junior High School and was shot in the neck inside the West Baltimore School. Police said that the 14-year-old boy was jumped by three youths for his blue Georgetown jacket. He struggled down the hallway and collapsed in the cafeteria. School officials called his death the first homicide in Baltimore Public School, and the killing touched off a firestorm of debate over school safety. The police ultimately charged 16-year-old Chestnut, Watkins, and Stewart Jr. with murder, and they sentenced all three teens to life in prison. Baltimore State Attorney Marilyn Mosby said Monday that the detective and the prosecutor in this 1983 case coached and coerced the testimony of four students. Prosecutors appeared Monday in Baltimore Circuit Court to ask the judge to throw out the three convictions. Present day, all four of those witnesses have now recanted, according to the state attorneys uh, general. Uh, The evidence of coerced pretrial preparation, one former student told the state they were told to, quote, get with the program. Additionally, the attorney general's office believes that exculpatory evidence was withheld, particularly interviews from other students who identified the killer as another man who ultimately died in 2002. This is just another example, ladies and gentlemen, of wrongful convictions taking place in our criminal justice system. Now, I will be the first to tell you, there is a quote that says the American judicial system is absolutely terrible, but it is better than anywhere else in the world. And I do truly believe that. 
we have juries that make decisions, and they'd make the best decisions they can on the information that they have. But when they're not given all of the information, they can't make the correct decision. And fortunately, our system is set up that errors can be corrected. The problem is sometimes it takes 10, 20, 30, 40 years where somebody is sitting in prison for something they did not do. We can do better. We can do better. Bill Cosby gave a telephone interview from jail just the other day, and he is not remorseful. In fact, he believes that he would not be given parole because you have to admit or accept responsibility for your conduct. Mr. Cosby calls the uh, trial that took place a complete sham. It was unjust and not fair, and he will not admit to something that he did not do. Cosby is still serving three to 10 years in Pennsylvania prison following his September 2018 conviction on charges of aggravated indecent assault. Bill Cosby said that he anticipates serving his entire sentence, saying he's not guilty and will never admit to something he didn't do. Displaying remorse is generally required as a prerequisite to obtain parole, and he is simply not going to do it. Sometimes you have to wonder, is Mr. Cosby perhaps correct? Maybe nothing happened inappropriately, or is he in complete denial? Let me know what you think. You all may remember the case of Takashi 69 He's a rapper, and he was also a uh, participant in a criminal organization in New York. And the significance about Mr. Takashi 69 is that he would never, ever, ever snitch, okay? Because why? Snitches end up in ditches. That's what people generally say in the criminal justice system, particularly when it comes to the underworld of organized crime. Well, Takashi 69 wanted to cut a deal for himself, and he ultimately testified against his friends, and there you go, trying to get a little benefit for himself. So Takashi 69, whose name is Daniel Hernandez, um, had an assault charge dismissed because the complaining witness in the case did not want to pursue the charges. Let's get something straight, ladies and gentlemen. In a criminal case, the victim, whether it be a victim of a, an assault or a domestic violence or anything along those lines, the charging decision is usually not up to the uh, complaining witness, the victim in the case. They are simply a witness in the case. That is why the charging documents say the United States of America versus blank or the state of blank, fill in the blank, against the defendant. That's because the state picks up the charges. They're the ones that pursue it. And the, really, the victim has no say in whether the case goes forward. They can say they would like the case not to go forward, but it is not ultimately their decision. So Takashi 69 you know, he got lucky. Maybe his friends decided... Uh, the uh, maybe the complaining witness decided that it would be in his best interest not to uh, go forward on something like this, or basically he just didn't want the hassle anymore. Clearly, he thought it was worth filing charges at one point, and then he changed his mind. Takashi 69 got lucky. I guess he's got one less problem to worry about. All right. That's all we've got for you today. Please leave us a comment below. Six million dollar man, do you think he'll ever pay a penny? Why are all these cases coming up for exoneration? And do you believe Bill Cosby? Do you think he's innocent? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Um, yes, we're a little casual today. Why? Because it snowed in Denver. And Denver has become... I don't know what it's become, but it's becoming soft. And when the snow falls, even if it's just a little bit, the entire city shuts down and the courts close down. It is unbelievable. But we were here because we are here for you. Thank you for watching. Our success would not be possible without you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk.